Hi everybody. How's everybody doing? I am starting the stream. We're gonna try and finish the game. Try and finish up some other stuff that I haven't done. I don't know exactly how long the end game takes, but I uh, give it an hour or two. Let's switch over to get my chat on. I did not figure out. I'm gonna figure out soon. I get my chat on the screen so I can save it for the YouTubes, but let's save that for a new game. Right now we're just gonna finish up this long, long tale. Also, hi to my lovely, wonderful girlfriend, Yvette. I can't wait for you to get home tonight. This is one of the things that I've not done. Um, I think I'm supposed to resolve this peacefully, but my chance has passed. Uh, it's my recollection. really go all out. That Ogre Matron is just about down now. <laughs> wow. Having the Ogre Matron... Oh, no, that was, that was me that did the 24 crush damage. Me, hollow notes. Um, let's get a dragon out. Oh, that's a lot of, a lot of them. It's very difficult to see anything in this.
Okay, it looks like the ogre matron is down. Wow. Palagina just absolutely destroyed that thing. That seemed to go okay. I mean, hey, Sea Wolf, how's it going? Relatively okay. I just murdered the ogre matron. Uh, I don't think I should have, but I don't know if I had a choice. Uh, something like that. Ah, uh, bees. Rude, yes. I'm very rude. They, after they helped you against the robots. Well, I think these might be different ogres. I think these ones can help you against uh, what something. Okay, I think that's everything. Got it. Let's see what's in here. I'll see what's ahead. Yeah, let's... Let's see what's in here. That'll do it. Okay. Some stuff. Hmm. I need to do something else for... I'm finishing up Sagani's quest. I don't think I've done that much. Uh, and then I'm just going to do the main quest, I think. Or the siege. 
the Cragholt or the other one. There's like two other quests that I would like to do, I think. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. Just some deer horns, okay. Here? Yeah, okay, continuity in two, that definitely means that I have to do it. Um, but maybe I will do it off stream and just beat the game on this stream and be there, done with it. Hmm, wait, where was I supposed to go? It says the Adra Arch. Have I already done that? Yeah, but we found it. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to go to the next place. Well. Somewhere here. The figurine, it's glowing. The figurine is glowing. Probably that spooky animal. Oh, here we go. Uh, so you see a group of Glen Fathen standing in a circle. Sagani glances from the Adra statuette to the hunters, looking for a connection. Meanwhile, the hunters turn and notice you. Their bows are drawn. The, does the name Persok sound familiar to you? Any of you? What kind of Estramor foolishness is this? They step aside and turn to you, and as they do, do you, do you see something on the ground behind them? Lying amidst the ferns is a white stag. Dark blood mars its brilliant coat, and its sides tremble with quick shallow breaths. You feel a presence in the beast, something ancient and familiar. Before you can sp before you can speak, something thumps to the ground. You look down and see the Audra bear, its bright glow flickering. Arc shadow. Sagani draws up beside you, her wide eyes fixed on the dying stag. Ferret's wheel, is that... One of the hunters takes a step forward, and Sagani raises her bow, an arrow knocked. Any closer, and you'll bleed out next to him. Her voice is low and I tremulous. I'd prepared myself to meet a stranger. To share the honor and history of my village with someone who had no knowledge of us. Even someone who'd scorn our way of life. I was going to tell him about the years of abundance in the souk. How his granddaughters have hunted caribou, and his grandsons made our walls strong. But he'll be gone in minutes. Shh. 
She kneels by the fallen stag, placing her hand on its head. She begins speaking. She tells Persak of prosperous decades, of the grain trade that sustained them through long winters. She recites the stories told about him and speaks of the new elders who have followed in his footsteps. Hmm. Experience. The stag takes a final shuddering breath and falls still. If you've finished your chanting, we need to get to work before the meat spoils. Have you no respect? A great soul inhabited this body. She takes the lusterless Audra figurine. And it's gone now. What's left is our kill. How can you show so little regard? From people who revere stones and long dead Audra. She slanders the builders. Mm, let's actually not murder them. This is about my people, our way of life. If that's not worth blood, I don't know what is. You Estramoran are full of useless talk. Well, tried. Okay. I think it is time to do one of these because these are always funny. Um. Devil says, it would be neat if Sagani started this fight next to the stag. Yeah, that would make more sense and also be tactically pretty interesting. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's what I thought. Mm, well, I guess that's the end of that quest. Should I do the crag halt? Or oh wait, no, there was. Let me do the one other one that I was thinking of. Unless there's something here. I think there might be. I mean, it's a waterfall, so there has to be a cave behind it. Nice little boar. No. No, nothing. Ooh, something. <coughs> I'll just read this out because hey, it's the last stream. Why not indulge in some excess of lore? 
Among the kind wayfarers, in the event that a member of the order dies of natural causes, it is customary for the paladin to request burial in a dangerous place that is difficult to reach. In fulfilling their lost comrade's request, the other kind wayfarers forge new paths that others may more easily follow. When the elder paladin, Adram Delphar, died, his brothers and sisters set out for Red Flower Lake in a remote eastern part of Red Cirrus, but they never reached their destination. With so few kind wayfarers left in that part of the Eastern Reach, the Order has reached out for assistance in recovering their comrades and helping them see uh, see them to the resting place. The road to Red Flower Lake turned out to be even more dangerous than the elders of the kind wayfarers had expected. They believed that the attack against Adram Delphar's funeral procession had been carried out by ogres. Instead, instead Ader and the kind wayfarer Initiates uh, discovered Aotans, twisted two-headed ogres of incredible size and ferocity. Recovering the paladin's bodies was costly, with five more initiates dying in the process. In the end, Adair and seven kind wayfarers reached Red, Red Flower Lake. There, they held a service for Adram Delphar and the others that died to make their way to the summit. On the way back down, the initiates placed marked cairns along the trail to indicate when it had been cleared by the kind wayfarers and at what cost. Yikes. Exalted hands. Oh, it got his shoes. That's nice. Oh, can push someone or heal them. That's kind of cool. Nice. Um, yeah, that was kind of a mess reading that out. I gotta get my, my practice in for the rest of this. I think was it at Catno? I think so. Amazing. You could fit a whole village in here. Sort of the idea. Who am I? Uh, what am I doing? Battle of Yen Woodfield. Um, let me see if there's any other people. some other stuff I can do, but I'm not sure. Really. Well, here's what I can do. I think I could just go in. I'm gonna save at the start, and then go in, and then I think you just uh, pay 10,000 gold, which I can do, since I think I have all of the items in the game. Just about feels that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna look at maybe using boots of speed. 
Is that last command bonus? Hmm. Yeah, those are coming off. Where did those boots go? Item type. Yeah, there we go. Plus three lore. Grants carouse. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, there we go. Boots of speed, so many boots of speed. Um, I'm not sure where those coup de gras and intimidating. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, pick them up out of a chest in the main hall. Oh, thank you. Let me just go do that. Uh, this seems like it would be the place. Oh, hello. Wow, so many things. It's like I forgot that that mechanic existed. Thank you, Seawolf. It's again. Okay. It seems like I haven't looked at my inventory in a while. Um, there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I'm not gonna change weapons. Really. Two-handed. Yeah, there is no sale value. Well, that's my only two-handed weapon user, I'm pretty sure. Oh, let's look. And it's, see, that's the problem, is it's... Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I'll stick it in her inventory so she can at least 
look at it fondly. Because I'm not going to give up that. Although that should be really ranged. Because everyone should have ranged. Purge of Toxins. That seems good. Wait, did I do that on the right? Mm hmm. That seems all good. Yeah, I don't even remember how that works. The Disappointer. Oh, very good. Palagina's breastplate. Yeah, that's a monk paladin chanter. Hilarious. Would end planes and defeat the beast walkers. Hmm. Crafting a bog dragon scale. Where the fuck am I supposed to find that? Hmm. I think if I'm gonna do a heavy armor, I'm just gonna go for the raw. Actually, I think I'm not going to go. Yeah, that's probably better. It's only one point behind. Yeah, no, that's actually a lot better for the Barbarian, I think. Um... 
<laughs> you see Wolf remembers also forgetting it, forgetting that chest. Okay, uh, this is where I'm just about done. Just want to look at some rings, you know. What is mine lance? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do it. That's that's very good. Not even have a ring. Ooh. Wow. Very good rings. I'm just going to do it based on... Rot skulls, that sounds pretty good. Um, need some bracers up in here. Yeah, I mean, I think that does seem like a really good thing for her to have. I 
least everyone's wearing a belt. Cause that's all I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna really worry about. Alright. Do love a good spot of inventory management. Let's talk about the army. Special allies do I have available? Ooh, I do get Crag Ogres and Elite Raid Saren Pathfinders. Yep. I'll meet you there. Let's take a closer look at our, our party now. I mean, should I even bother equipping the other people? Amazing. You could fit a whole village in here. Gores. Safe travels. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do it real quick. Um. Okay. Yeah, I figured that might be the case. Wow, fine padded armor. There we go. Oh, as much fun as the diving helmet is. Giving her a magneto helmet seems more appropriate. Bartender string. Nothing on his hands.
Yeah, I think the monocle's too good. Deflection. Snurf's folly. Nothing on his head. That seems like a huge mistake. Um, yeah, let's make him smart. Why not? Need more boots. There we go. Cloak of protection, ring of protection. I think the mirror damage with uh, Adair would be very good. Oh yeah, 15% act on speed. That's very good. New boots. Good card piece. No rings. Well and truly out of boots. Hmm. Make everyone a nice hat. Okay, I think we're done messing around. Let's go do some murders. Oh wait, no, we're not nearly done messing around. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Primary attack. You 
Withering Strike. That seems like really good. Good one. How many levels? He's a, he's level twelve now. Okay. Yeah, aggrandizing. That sounds good. Restore moderate endurance. I mean, you gotta. No, Pillar of Faith. What am I talking about? Pillar of Faith is hilarious. Plus 15 interrupt, that seems pretty good. Um, but I will take a bonus third level spell, actually. Mm, twin stones. Twin Stones is always hilarious for me. Just knocking people over. Similar to a Paladin Cell's focus. Hmm. Plus 10 fortitude. Need it. Um, sword type. I think that's what I have. Let's say I have a saber. Well, let's give him ruffian. Why not? And lastly, mm. just melt everyone's brain. Yep, last class based one. Oh, I'd just get both of them. Just unbelievably powerful. That would be fun to have that party again, so. but we are going to do this the way we do it. Actually, suppose we no longer need Sagani, but I like Sagani, so. Fall in on my position. Follow me. Following your lead. Oh yeah, I should. Uh. What am I doing? Ha 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 ha. 
Yeah, Grieving Mother looks like she's ready to sack Rome, says Seawolf, which is very funny and true. She looked really good with that helmet and that uh, coat. It's a good little fashion show for all the late game armor, too. People can use the video to look at the item descriptions. I know I might in the future. Easier than booting up the game, probably, or installing, reinstalling the game. Just to look at those UI screens, because I think where, where they got to in the end with this game after they did I mean it's it's very different from when it launched but the UI I think is actually really good um let's just do plus three might have a moment to talk uh yes a deer in the middle of air Glonfoss but I'm glad I can bring the success back to Masuk and perhaps Persok will return to us one day because of it. Do you think Masuk will remember the way they will remember you the way they remember Persok? Be nice to know I've made a difference and to get the first choice of caribou flank during festival honest, time. The biggest relief is knowing that my journey is worthwhile. That finding Persok and carrying our village's story to him will strengthen our community and return his soul to us. I'm looking forward to being back in Masuk among my family and my people. But more than anything, I'm glad to finally understand the purpose behind these last five years. What do you think? Do you feel as though you understand the purpose behind your hunt for Theos? Mm. I need to fix the evil he's perpetrated. That would bring hope to many people, Watcher. I hope you're able to accomplish it. Just watch me. Anyway, Theos isn't getting any closer. I suppose we'd best keep after him. That's right. Okay, Battle of Yenwood. And then end game. That's the plan. And then that's the stream. Uh, and then I might do the Siege of Cragholt or do some attempts on it uh, after. Sadly, I don't think there's any references to Sagani and Deadfire. Yeah. Amazing. You could fit religion here. Some of these, a lot of these, are just doing because I, I didn't do them on my first time through the game. Uh, I think I've completed everyone's quest now except for the ones that I did during the first game like Adair, Durance, Grieving Mother. Um that's not one, so I think that might be all of them. I still have some White March ones I never did. Oh I never did the Devil of Carrick. Never finished it. Don't know if I tried it in um one of the previous streams and failed, but could also do this one. Um, and then I know that there's some others that I haven't done. Like, I know that there's still another uh, player character that I haven't recruited who's just like hanging out in a fish barrel that I missed. I just like wasn't paying attention to some dialogue or something that was supposed to get me to look into a fish barrel. And so I never recruited. Might want to do a dare if it's quick since his ending will impact two a bit. Oh, that's a good point. Um, well, I'll do that off stream then. Yeah, since I'm a monk, it also doesn't really matter. As you crest a small hill overlooking Yenwood Field, Lord Gathbin's army is a flurry of activity scurrying to and fro. Even from this distance, you can hear the drums of war beating their steady cadence designed to intimidate their foes while organizing the rank and file into battle formations. Marshal Forwin approaches. You've arrived just in time. Lord Gathbin's forces are beginning to move. An attack is imminent. Any idea what he's planning? 
His ultimate objective is to... F uh, I'm actually stroking my chin, so that's good. His ultimate objective is to face you in battle and to be seen defeating you. I doubt he is foolish enough to challenge you to single combat, of course. Sound the horn, it's time to finish this. Marshal Foreman begins barking orders and your troops quickly form up. Gathbin's army follows suit as uh, Durin uh, war drums echo across the field. The ones that have the most impact would be Aloth and Palagina, I think, so you've got those already, unfortunately. Yeah, As excellent. So, um, yeah, off stream I'll do Cragholt and Adair, and then I think I'll just be done. And also, I think there's another one after Cragholt, like another like late game and end game boss monster, optional boss monster that I could do. Um, so I still got a couple hours. Uh, again, probably not going to stream it just so I can get through it slowly if I need to. And, you know, left this weight from my shoulders. <sighs> Within a few moments, the marshal raises a brass horn in the visage of a mighty boar to his lips. He looks at you expectantly. Uh... Tonight, the ravens will feast on our enemies while we drink, fuck, and revel in glorious victory. That's an option. Now raise your weapon above your head and scream at the top of your lungs. Send these adherent dogs to Bareth or fed for Cadnua. For Cadnua. Um, I'm just going to scream at the top of my lungs. Seawolf says, there's a quest that follows Cragholt. Yeah, I was including that in the stuff that has continuity. Oh, it does. Okay, so that I'll definitely do that. Um, yeah, so as as long as there's no no grieving mother, no Durant stuff, it should be good on all that. Your troops bellow across the field, pounding weapon to shield as the marshal's horn sounds. Dozens of bowstrings twang in unison behind you as your archers unleash a hail of arrows at Gathman's army. The missiles hits through the air with deadly accuracy, felling scores of enemies. In a bold move, Gathman points his sword toward your position, giving an unheard order. His infantry shields raised uh, or charged the field. Your infantry charges headlong into the enemy infantry in the center of the field. The cacophonous sound of metal on metal is nearly deafening as the two forces collide. The fighting is fierce, and the screams of the dying numerous. Led by the veteran warriors rallied to your cause, the troops fight valiantly and appear to be holding their ground. The battle thus far appears to be a stalemate. Then a group of Adiran battle mages emerges from behind the enemy lines. They begin weaving their hands in unison with practiced precision. Suddenly waves of arcane fire erupt among your troops. The acrid smell of smoke and burning flesh is nearly overwhelming. From the left flank, a unit of Rautai Berserkers, clad in plate armor and wielding greatswords, begin to collapse the left side of the line. The ground is thick with the dead as they press their advantage. Meanwhile, bleak walker paladins, dressed in dark armor, carrying sword and shield, stride back and forth behind Gathin's lens, rallying his warriors and exhorting them to fight harder. As the battle rages, Marshal Forwin looks to you for orders. Oh, I have to actually do a battle. Durants get mentioned in two, but it's just his involvement in the Saints War, I guess. If you don't do his quest uh, in this game, then your character won't know about his involvement in that, but it won't really affect anything except a few dialogue lines. That's probably fine. Um, study the battlefield. Troops fight bravely, and your lines are holding at the moment. Gathman's army is slowly pushing you back, and your casualties are mounting. Defeat is likely. Let's take out the, the battle mages. Yeah, the ogre allies. Crag ogres charge the Gathman lines in a blood frenzy. Using their sides, many of the ogres leap over the enemy line, ignoring grievous wounds. While many fall, nearly a dozen reach the battle mages. A high-pitched scream permeates the din of battle as you see an unarmed ogre lift one of the mages overhead and rip him in two. Shortly after, the magical barrage against your army ceases. Take out the berserkers. Uh, have the arquebusiers open fire. Blammo. Bang bang. 
Uh, they quickly form a line and unleash a salvo of gunfire on the charging berserkers. Bullets tear through their plate armor and the berserkers fall by the score. By the time the berserkers realize the danger and attempt to charge the gunmen, another volley rips most of them to pieces. Those left standing quickly retreat. When the line is held, you spot dozens of your own troops killed by the gunfire. Oops. Bleak walkers must die. Order the pathfinders to give them a few volleys. Raid Saren archers send volleys of the arrows into the bleak walker ranks. The precision of the archer shocks the heavily armored warriors as the raid sirens find weak points between the thick plates of armor. With Gathbin's elite guard behind him and the line in front of them, bleak walkers are forced to charge. This doesn't stop the pathfinders from launching volley after volley into both the knights and their allied troops on the front line. Each volley lands with devastating effect as dozens of enemies drop to the bloody earth, clutching lethal arrow wounds. As the battle rages, it looks for me off orders. Victory is within my grasp! Whee! As the remainder of your forces charge, a horn sounds in the distance, and a new contingent of warriors crests a nearby hill. As Gethman's reinforcements charge headlong into the fray, his other troop troops cheer triumphantly. New arrivals quickly join Gathman's forces on the field. As the battle rages, your forces are clearly winning the day. Gathman's army begins to collapse. Holland Oats! Lord Gathman strides through the carnage, his elite guard accompanying. I'll not have you take the vic this victory from me. It's time I put you down like the dog I you are. Point your weapon, salute him. Let's salute him. Wow. Wowie. I think let's um let's do do some Wow, that's a lot of... This is kind of a big battle. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there's a lot, there's, there's kind of a lot going on. Let's just spray randomly. That seems pretty good. Wow. 
Wow. That dog just... This, uh, Seawolf says, this fight is a nice capper to the domain management minigame. I think gesturing at the army management stuff, those systems escalate to in tabletop games as much as they can within the systems they had. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's nice. Um... Down goes Gathbin. Bad to be the last person alive on the battlefield. Lord Gathbin lies dead before you, his army scattered, bloodied, and exhausted. Your remaining troops look to you, swords raised high in victory, chanting your name. Hollow notes, hollow notes, hollow notes. Uh, very good. Holding the hem of his robe as he steps over several bodies, Chancellor Warren approaches you. Although his face is pale and he looks as if he will be sick at any moment, he forces a smile. Lord Holland Oates, while I'm grateful this dispute is finally over, it is regrettable so many lives were lost in the process. Gathman should have just been, just, just been reasonable from the start. He gags involuntarily at his silk boot brushes against a severed head. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, Lamau indeed. See, Wolf. Uh... Chancellor Warren says, in any event, as the legal arbiter of Earl Badamar, I'm here to inform you that you've been declared a Thane of the Dyramid and Kadnua, Kadnua has been recognized as your domain. Uh, it shall forever be thus and will pass down to any descendants you may have in the future. Unless it gets destroyed. Of course now that your claim has been upheld, you are expected to forward a small portion of any taxes you collect to your rightful Lord Earl Badamar. Uh, tell him I'm grateful for his assistance. assistance. I'll make sure his taxes are collected with regularity. Or I'll keep all the taxes. Yeah. I'll inform that everything is ordered. It appears my work is done. Feel free to visit the palace. If he steps in a pile of entrails with a wet squish as he turns to leave, on second thought, I'll come and visit you. Yes, yes. Perhaps in a year or three. And then Marshal Forwin says, Lord Holland Oates, it's been an honor to serve you. I'll be making my way back to Garon's grasp. The Earl has some urgent business for me there, unfortunately. Should you ever find yourself that far north, feel free to call on me. I'd love to trade war stories uh, with you over a cup or two. Sorry, I was distracted by Sophie scratching on the post. Can we come up? Come say hi? He grasps your hand briefly in a firm grip and turns on his heel. Well, I guess it gets a... Uh, yeah, there we go. Achievo. Well, this is a pretty grim, grim locale. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Always love the classics. Um. Yeah, I, I think I'm actually good for the end game. Oh, I don't need to uh, rest up again. Barely took a scratch in that battle. So what do I do? 
I just go to descend the pit, go to burial aisle. Unless I want to do any of this. Nope. 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 I think all of this is bad. I don't want to do it. Ah, I remember that. That is pretty good. Okay, so I think it's an old song. Uh, let's beat this game. Let's see this ending. Let's do this battle that I think should give me a lot less trouble this time because I have uh, cleared the entire rest of the game. Uh, when I did it in the first month of release, it was, was it, was it the first month or first few months? Um, it was very, it was a very tough battle. I had trouble with it and it was very, uh, I played it like four or five times. It was very good. It's exactly how a final battle should go. Ooh. And I'm answering, leaving in seven days. Well, she can... Yeah, four levels higher now. Probably. Um, that's probably about what it is. Yeah, because I went through the whole DLC. And that, uh, I'm sure, raised the level cap. And there's all sorts of spells and everything that weren't in there on release. I'm ready to return. Wait, no, I'm not. Yeah, because the first DLC had the Crag Holt thing, which was sort of a toughest battle in the game situation. I think it should be relatively okay for me uh, at level 12. We'll see, though. Maybe I'll switch up and do my other characters for the uh, off-stream stuff. Actually use Grizzing Mother and all those high-level psychic spells that I haven't really, I've kind of forgotten about since I haven't played I the game with her at all. I secret and sacred places in your company than I could have imagined. Do you remember when we were children and the missionaries came to tell us about the gods? They told us we could see them in the stars. I remember when I heard that. I snuck out at night and climbed the watchtower in the old fort because I wanted to see them better. That fort burned down a few years ago when we cast the missionaries out. It was the missionaries who set fire to it. They didn't want us to be able to use it. Shame. There was history in that fort. This is your home as much as it is mine. Do you worry about it? I don't remember what's going on, like, literally at all. Um, but that's fine. I remember the broad strokes of the plot. Uh, it's been through worse. In turn, I myself have that. It's not a reinforcement. I miscalculated. I miscalculated many things since this began. I'm relieved you weren't one of them. It's a good thing we didn't hang you. Oh, my. I always knew this path would have consequences. But I never wanted to see Kratum suffer on my behalf. I don't think I can stay here any longer. I am told the Inquisition is gathering an army, that they have sent messengers to bargain with rulers from distant lands. Kratum is not built to withstand a siege. I think the Seawall says I think the Watcher doesn't really know what's going on right now either, which is a good point. Uh, through a lot of this game, you're if kind of just coming, supposed to be. I should be, be doing what Theos is doing. I will need allies. Allies and a stronghold that can resist an invading army. I feel words formed long ago rising in your throat like a toxic black bile. 
Have you thought about Osionis? Osionis. They have held off many would-be invaders, and their king has no love of the Inquisition's faith. I wonder, would he listen? Probably not. I forgot there being battles in the this part. <laughs> Oh yeah, why did I think ghosts were going to be affected by a toxic cloud? Doesn't really make any sense. But yeah, the, the plot sure of this game, thing. like just with uh, your character not exactly knowing what's going on at all times. Sure makes it hard to dip in and out of because uh, you're like, am I just forgetting something or am I not supposed to know what is happening and will I never know what's happening? <laughs> Almost to the big exposition yep. dump. Yeah. That should be good. I think I mostly remember what's going on, though. You venture through a doorway into an underground tunnel. A staircase coils upward, leading to a dim passage. Clear the rubble with a pry bar. Wedge your pry bar against a large stone and all your weight on it. Your effort dislodges the boulder and it rolls free with a heavy groan. Well, uh, other slabs and chunks of debris begin to break away. The massive pile creaks and rumbles, threatening to lose a thousand pounds of stone on you. As the debris tumbles down, you lunge through the narrowing gap. However, Aloth isn't fast enough and disappears behind the falling rocks. Aloth emerges from a cloud of dust, hunched over and cradling tender ribs. Oops. Light breaks into the tunnel up ahead and growing brighter as you continue. Soon the passage ends, opening high up high on the cliffside of the burial aisle. Oops. Just broke Alas. Oh, bruised ribs. Scare some ghosts. Sure 
thing. Ah, oh, these fucking ghosts. I'm just I'm clearly gonna rinse this. Oh, this is quite a lot of ghosts. This is what I should be doing. Prayer against fear. That seems appropriate. Uh, much more manageable now. these mushrooms. Nice, some money. Didn't need that. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, let's get these father's teeth. Don't need no teeth. As uh, so Wolf says, in Deadfire, there's a high level pre spell called Dismissal, which is a big AoE that straight up destroys any ghost zombie it's successful against. And it is very good. I can't wait to start playing with the priest again. Alright, here we go. Into the hole! Another turn, Inquisitor. Theo signals some unseen attendant standing beside a large crank. I ask again, Yovara Ixensios, do you confess to these heresies of which you stand accused? He waits, but Yovara only stands straight ahead, her face stony. Uh, the creak of her restraints, the only sound to a yikes. Do you confess to apostasy? I confess to renouncing a mistake. Do you confess to conspiracy against the one true faith? I confess to opening minds. Hmm. Do you confess to false prophecy? False prophecy? I confess to following a false prophet. Indeed. And where might we find this heretic? He wears the robes of a Grand Inquisitor. Ooh, I think she means Theos. You have no followers here, heretic. Your lies hold no sway in the court of the penitents. Only my truth, then. Another turn. Wait, wait. I'm ready. I'm ready. You are ready to give a confession? I am ready to hear one from you. Theo shakes his head and points at the Inquisitor, and the scraping grind of rusted gears echoes in your mind as the apparitions fade away. Hmm. Seems fine. There's a first time for everything, and a last. Leap into the pit. Leap into the pit. Great pit lies in the shadow of the statue of Vodica. No light from the surface reaches the bottom, but even so, you catch flickers of a ghostly glow in the depths. A wind from the pit buffets you. It isn't cold, but it raises goose flesh. Oh God. Oh, excuse me. The wind carries a whisper, low and sibilant. As you look into the pit, souls gather around you. They encase you in a cloud of essence that swirls around your body while you consider your next move. Jump into the pit. You jump, trusting in the promises of the gods and the power of the souls to bear you safely down. Sudden drops takes your breath away, but the souls uh, catch you, encasing you in a shining, thrumming aura. But while they slow your descent, you can still feel that you are falling faster than you should. The essence flowing around you is, str is strong but chaotic. You find yourself drifting toward the wall. Palagina falls with you for a moment, but seems oddly buoyant during her slow descent. Feathers uh, fluttering silently along her arms and the sides of her face. Suddenly her golden eyes grow wide as she shouts out, Look out, Holland Oats! The wall! Resolve, take control of the souls to guide you. Guide yourself to safety. Concentrating, you focus on the essence around you and knit it together in your mind. What was a jumble of souls becomes a single entity, coordinated and purposeful. It steers you to safety at the center of the pit. You manage to spread your arms and legs into an X, studying, descent, your, studying your position at the rate of your descent. You start to feel more comfortable until you notice that Alice is still falling too fast. 
Aleph plummets, f flailing and out of control. You could attempt to rescue, but the ground is approaching fast. It will take a feat of speed and agility to avoid injury. Dive for your companion. Ground is rising fast, and you're not quite fast enough. You snatch Aleph out of free fall, but you're unable to regain control of your own momentum. You take the brunt of the impact, landing hard against the millennia-old stones in the Court of the Penitents. Considered high level for the content in Act 4. If you would like, the critical path can be increased in difficulty to give you more of a challenge. The rewards you receive will be the same regardless of the option you choose. Okay, I guess that's nice. Let's do the high level, because fuck it. I love a spell. I would what dismiss like all ghosts. Okay, here we go. The descent comes to an abrupt end. You remain still for a moment while your heart settles and your eyes adjust, breathing in stale, forgotten air. Before you, a narrow and eroded walkway becomes faintly visible in the dim light, cutting a winding path through a cavern so expansive it seems a world unto itself. In the distance, you can make out the cold gleam of living Audra veins that spike and fork in and out of view from the murky depths beneath. Their glow a faint and fleeting guide along the ancient trail. You look above at the opening you jump through, now barely a speck of light like some distant star alone in the cosmos and forever out of reach. Your only way lies ahead. Ahead! Well, that went better than I expected. I think I dislocated my... <coughs> I also bruised my rib. Bracing. Did anyone bring a ladder? Uh, let's make camp. Primordial? I think vessel. Yeah, let's just do vessel. I think that's what they are. Like golems? Wonderful. Nice and quiet. Found. Be cautious. Be constant. Death ring. Just spirits so far. Just yeah. like old times. Well, there's a. There we go. Just drop a dragon on them.
I'm ready. Tell me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Will do. So Wolf says, I guess I didn't use summons much in one, but I made it most of the way through two before realizing some summons have their own limited use abilities you can activate. Looks like the dragon here has the same abilities as the dragon summon in two. Uh, I completely didn't. I don't remember looking at that ever. So that's good. There we go. Say the word. Just like Okay. Quick and quiet. Hmm. This isn't going very well. Well, I, I sure thought I got that. I looked at it. I guess it didn't really. I gained a lot of wounds. That's about it. Silly.
shot at this. Will do. We ghosties. I'll go on ahead. I've got something over here. Got a water elemental. That's very good. Okay, I need to do that a lot more. All of the time. Say the word. Okay. I'll have this open in no time. That'll do it. Okay. Sure. I don't even remember this part. To be honest.
column of Adja rises above you, stoic and silent, its ridged layers a measuring stick for the passing of ages. It feels to you as a thick block of ice, and you perceive buried deep in its core a dim, flickering flame, all but extinguished, yet preserved against the ravages of the elements. At your approach, the flame seems to steady and draw strength. The layers separating it from you melt away, and you are bathed in its glow, a bright beacon in the gloom. The glow seems to fade, as though you had adjusted to its uh, intensity, and where it was, Yovara, Yovara uh, seeps into existence, an idolic shade hovering above the moist prison floor. Though ageless, she appears somehow different to you now, a slight stoop to her carriage, perhaps, or a trace of sunkenness in her eyes. There is a broad scar across her face, fibrous and wormy where f flames once slapped, unhealed even in death. Come on, baby, jump up here. My old pupil, you are a welcome sight, but a worrying one as well. Do you still wander lost in the darkness? Big exposition dump, Sissy Wolf. Hooray, exposition. You are so different now from who you were then, yet much remains the same. Old troubles with a new face. What is it that has brought you here? Uh, seems that I have unfinished business. I'd hoped after our last discussion you would find what you sought. It's the black kitty. Has it eluded you all this time? I can only guess your presence here has something to do with Theos. The energy of this place changes when he is near. I don't know what he has done, but I do know of the souls that pass through here now. They do not come by choice. Theos diverted them from the, them from the cycle. He seeks to empower Wodica and to blame Animancy for the damage he's caused. After all this That's pretty time, dastardly plot. He would still stand against the tide. You knew me when Theos did. There's something I need to know about that time. I will tell you what I remember. There's something about that lifetime my soul can't let go of. I need to know what it is, and I'm running out of time. I see moments from that life. Of you. Of the Inquisition. Of Theos. I can see his influence. Still hanging like a weight about your neck. So it always was. He had inspired something. We spoke of him the last time you were here also. It was just after the trial. You were agitated. I think because you started to consider that what I was teaching may have been true. Yofara's mouth tightens and her brow furrows, a look of pity. Her eyes shift back and forth between each of yours, as if looking for something that would help her decide whether to speak. That the gods aren't real. <gasps> of course not. It all makes sense now. This is Palagina, which is hilarious. <laughs> I dreaded the idea from the moment the Delamgon suggested it. And yet, it almost feels like a relief. But that's not... Is that the truth we've come for? That even the gods are false? That doesn't seem possible. What I taught was that the gods whose faith we had been spreading were not gods that's, at all. That's the big but twist. Else entirely. God isn't real. Something created by people. Who created these gods and for what? They were conceived by Engwith, a society of high minds and broad concerns. Theos's people. In their time, every people worshipped its own gods. Sometimes they warred over it. After a few wars of their own, the Anguithans sought an end to it. They devoted all their energy to finding the true creators. Generation after generation, they prodded and worked the stitching of the world and unlocked its secrets. One day, they found an answer. Except the answer was no answer at all. There were no gods to be found. Or if there ever were, they were gone. It shook them, this finding. If they could discover this on their own, how long until others would? 
how long before war and chaos reigned over a world without consequence. But they had mastered many things in their pursuit of these answers. And with their mastery, they crafted their own gods to fill the void and sent missionaries to the corners of the world to spread their faith. How did you discover this? The Anguithan missionaries all knew it, but they never told the rest of us. They meant it to be a secret that died with them. And in the end, they allowed their bloodlines to fade from memory. I had been assigned to join a few of them at a temple. I found the door to their chambers closed, but the room was stone and the door thin. Their voices carried. I heard enough. I investigated the things they spoke of, and everything was there, just as they said it'd be. This is why you started your own faith? I never thought of it as faith, but I think you are right to call it that. Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. That was my faith. I became a missionary because the gods brought me hope that I wanted to bring to others. For a time, the truth sent me to a dark place. Then the day came when I realized nothing had changed, that I still had a purpose, and the purpose was the same and it was worth living for. I began questioning the other missionaries in public, exposing their parlor tricks. In time, their following became mine. You asked me this once before. Nothing I can say would be any proof, and it may be certainty your soul craves. Resolution. But if you are bound for the same place Theos directs these souls, you will see for yourself, as you once did. Everyone faces this truth at one time or another. Few confront it. Few have the stomach to ask what if. And in avoiding the question, they deny themselves an identity of their own. Yuvara scans her audience in silence, her eyes thoughtful, lingering on each member of your company in turn, finding interest in things unseen. What if you had always been alone, without guidance? Well, as poorly as I've chosen my guides, I suppose it would be a comfort to know that I'm free of them. The freedom has always been. It was the guidance that was the illusion. If all our common threads are spun from a lie, what's left to bind us together? Don't look to me. Perhaps nothing binds us. Rawatai tears itself in two, clutching after truth. And I... I wish I could have sated my hunger for truth in the halls of the Lore College. What if our burdens come to us not because they are meant to be, but because they happen to be? They shape us all the same. It doesn't matter how I drew the small tooth, or even that Pursok had become a deer. The task fell to me, and I completed it. What if even mastery over all things cannot answer the most basic of questions? I stopped asking those questions long ago. It is enough to care for those we love with the time we have in this life. What if no god had the authority to relieve our burdens or absolve our sins? Are the gods any less important because we created them? If what we're saying is true, people made the gods because they needed forgiveness, guidance, grace things we're not so good at offering one another. For the first time in decades, I feel whole. And it was the power of a god that made me so. Power it may have been, but not the power of a god. What if we can be assured of nothing? A lot of choices here. Then the only value is the things we create ourselves, the we at best build our own strength so we can bear it. Then only when we cease to exist as beings can peace be found. Then it is the questions that have always posed more value than their answers. Then the fewer people who realize that, the better. Then all we can do is endure. 
Uh, I'm gonna go for the first one. Verus. We find purpose in ourselves and in the people in our lives. Verus. Verus, my friends. There is bliss to be found in the things we create, but sorrow as well. Every creation bears the imperfections of its creator, and its creator's creator. Art and song are creations, but so are weapons and lies. We must be careful that our creations do not consume us. I ask these things not to trouble you, but to show why they must be confronted. No answer is simple, but somewhere between them all lies a truth so beautiful, not even a god could conceive it. Do we not owe ourselves a chance to find our part in it? We do. Even without assurances, there is still truth. If that is truly what you believe, then you are a far different person than the one I knew. I've been alone here with my thoughts for so long now. I've found peace with my failures and with my punishment. I no longer curse fate for what might have been. But there is one thing that has clawed and scraped at my mind all these years. One thing that will not be put to rest until I know. Until I understand. The first time hints of doubt trace her serene visage. I need to know why you chose to remain with the Inquisition, even after you'd learned the truth. Do you... Do you remember? I don't think I had a reason I just did it. All these years thinking about it, I don't think I ever imagined you did it without cause. This changes things. Good. Good. The things I taught, the things I believed, I needed to hear that. I needed to know it wasn't because... Because what? I need to know it wasn't because after everything you learned, you'd still rather believe in a lie. That is the conclusion people reach once they know everything, that my purpose has been a mistake. Did my opinion matter so much to you? You were a blank slate to me once. A blank slate that I had taught the wrong things. I'd given you a false faith. I had to know I could undo what I had done. Redirect you to embrace the truth. You had heard both sides, seen everything. If not you, then who? You're never going to be able to convince everyone of anything. True or not, there will always be dissent. I expected dissent. But I needed to know that true faith would prevail. Perhaps I'd been wrong to place so much importance on one person's actions. It was all I could do to feel like there was an answer. Even knowing what you've told me, some part of me knows it doesn't truly answer what I wish to know. Nor will an eternity of silent contemplation. I will have only my guesses and suspicions. And that will have to do. And what of your understanding of our past? Are you at ease with the choice you made? I see the world differently now than I once did. I regret what I did to you and wish your forgiveness. Yeah, there seems is nothing to forgive. The fault was always mine. I led you down the path that led to Theos. When I tried to steer you back, it was too late. To have taught someone wrong is far worse than to have done wrong yourself. Long have I wished to make amends for this, but the time has long since passed. At first I thought this might be the source of your soul's anguish. But now I see I was mistaken. You are not divided on this matter. You have put it behind you. It is with Theos that your agony lies, in sun and shadow. Your questions are not for me, but for him. And it may be that only an answer from the mouth of Theos himself will satisfy your needs. Yet if there is anything I can tell you that would be of use, ask and you shall know. In a matter of speaking, 
and you're bound this here. This is Freya Fiamma, the court of the penitents. Souls are confined here until they repent. They must beg the forgiveness of a god, pledge their soul to them, and they will be lifted from this place to the world above. In truth, they receive leniency, but not true mercy. The spite of Wittica is eternal. They linger above at the sight of the old court and are not permitted to leave the island, forever severed from the cycle. This prison was full once in the days of the Inquisition, but time weathers all things, even will. I'm the only tenant who remains. Yet, I feel their presence strongly now, as it was in the beginning. You have brought many of them here. Cry out for the judgment of Theos. You have struck some bargain with the gods, then. Yeah, the gods aid me because they want Theos destroyed. I owe them no debt. They aid you because they would bend you to their own purposes. Anguith built gods from ideals, and an ideal on its own is a grotesque and vicious thing. But these souls, these forgiven the gods have bequeathed you like chattel. They were loyal followers in life. They will be with you to the very end. Why don't you repent? Last time someone asked me that, I was bound to an iron wheel with a broken spine. There are many things I've come to doubt about the choices I made in life. But that trial was my one moment of certainty. Even without a chorus of gods to tell me I had been right. The gods need to be reminded that we have a spirit, and that spirit is proof against their power. They have the power to manipulate and confuse and ruin us, but not to change our will. I will remain here until the world crumbles and fades from existence with joy in my heart, knowing I've shown them what they truly are. Damn. Theos will not wait for you. If you do not catch up to him now, you may never find him again. Oh, we'll repay you for this curse. You notice a bond now, one that has always been an interleaving of her essence with yours at the extremities of your perception. You were tied to this woman's spirit, and you can feel a measure of control over it, as though you were its shepherd. I never wished to bring you harm. I had thought that the truth would liberate you. You did what you thought was best, forget I mentioned it. For my part in leading you to Theos in the very beginning, I hope you can forgive me. I hope whatever final guidance I've given you here proves more useful. Sure. If ever we should meet again, in this life or any other, I hope to find you at peace. Whoops. so quiet? I'm on the trail. Whoops. I guess that's why you don't go in the front door. I think I need to camp now. So, it's true. The gods are a sham that people have followed for thousands of years. Yep. That's... Sorry. <laughs> Don't know what you expect. Anyone here in Echo? 
Mmm. Potion of Major Endurance. For the benefit of the viewers at home, until I get the chat bot, Seawolf, when I sprung that trap and everyone died, Seawolf said, Haha, WTF. Which is, yeah, that was pretty shocking. Full of surprises, aren't you? Look at the size of this place. Look at that. A city to put all others to shame. And long lost. I don't suppose you could make a few bridges the same way, hmm? We've been lied to. Our whole lives. And many oh, lives before that. And it's led us to put our faith in a pantheon of gods that never deserved it in the first place. Uh, the tales is wrong. Most people are fundamentally decent. Knowing the truth can only make them better. Agreed. You're right. People will be better off finding direction on their own than following this farce. And besides, the gods haven't exactly done much to prevent us from slaughtering each other. If anything, they've only given us more pretenses for doing so. I've also been thinking. There won't be much left of Theos by the time you're done with him, if I know how you operate. That will leave the leaden key headless. Perhaps it's best it stays that way. Do what you then think let's is right. Theos. When this is all over, I'll make sure that no one is able to commit his abuses again. By becoming the head of the leaden key? Diamond. Say the word. Sure thing. Ready, watcher. Got it. Dragons.
Do a backflip. Lead the way. Can't get a good. Time to strike up camp. Mm. It's sleepy already, huh? Yeah, I don't need to do that. It's Whale! Everybody's favorite god! Shadows in the cavern suddenly lengthen and swallow you. When your eyes adjust to the darkness, you find yourself in the midst of what must be another vision. You are surrounded by mists. The grounds. The ground feels springy under your feet. You imagine that as soon as you take a step, the soil beneath you will erase all trace of your passage. As if on cue, the mist before you clear just enough for you to take a couple steps forward. You do, and the fog closes behind you. You continue for several minutes in this manner, one step at a time, never seeing more than the ground right in front of you. Eventually, rays of light cut through the haze, and you find yourself facing a canyon wall. Pelagina's head violently snaps to one side, her eyes tracking some unseen threats. She puts her hand to the side of her face, where two of her feathers have been cut short near the base, tufts of down floating in the air. Something whizzes past you. Just as you turn, you catch another whir of movement. Out of the mist floats a shape, small and round. You think you see another, and another, and they tickle the corners of your vision. You turn back to the canyon wall. The sun shifts along its path. What looked like a smooth rock face is the hollow of a cave. A figure steps out, its features shifting and changing before your eyes. He who sees and is not seen, save when he chooses, it seems. Connor regards the figure with wary fascination. I thought the god of mystery is my chief enemy at times, but one can seek out and one cannot seek out answers if the questions aren't there. The figure transforms from male to female, from Orland to Alma its bones lengthening and its fur receding into its flesh, the only detail that remains constant in the smooth, eyeless face. The whizzing, rushing shapes from the mist converge on the figure, and as they form a spinning cloud, you realize that they are eyes. Your very past is a mystery. You bury it deep, reinventing yourself with each new path. Yeah, cause I'm a drifter, baby! You unravel a thread, Watcher. One you have lost and discovered over generations. And following it to its end has only brought you back to the beginning. The eyes track you even as they circle the god. Speak plainly. Whale giggles, a strangely modulated sound that rises and falls as the god shifts from one form to the next. And drain the meaning from the end you have almost achieved. Your search for answers to your past has led you to another mystery, and one grander steal. Uh, my goal now is to see to the souls that Teos is trapped. Yes, but what would, would you do with them? A nebula of souls, blind and brimming with potential. The answer to Woodica's question and the beginning of yours. What would you do with them? Um, the clouds 
Uh, I said, I take it you've got something in mind. The clouds break and the torrent of rain washes Wales features clean. His blank face molds itself again, taking on the shape of something you've never seen before. Do not consign the souls to the fate of some god's choosing. You have found them. Now scatter them across existence, their destination known to neither god nor mortal. Let them be lost again, new answers to new riddles. Behind him, the sudden downpour has carved n new caves into the canyon. Uh, what end would that serve? No end, Watcher. That is the purpose. What would happen to the souls? None know. They could end up anywhere in the realms of gods or mortals, whole or divided. Discovering them again and charting their course through the ether will be a new mystery. That is a word for ending. Goodbye. And this is but a crossroads. Even I do not know what you would choose. Shadows from the new caves melt and spread across the landscape, covering you in darkness. When the light returns, the vision is gone. All right. So this is seems like it's gonna be chill. See, Wolf has. Uh, is this the game where you made the pledges to all the gods? And yes, it is, I believe. So. It's my sensible plan is to make pledges to all the gods and then hopefully piss them all off. Wolf says, if I recall, uh, doing what Whale wants is one of the two ways to piss them all off. And I think, yeah, it actually sounds like a pretty good way to go to me. Or a pretty good resolution to what happens in the plot. Damn it. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna rest soon, so...
got it. <sighs> I cannot keep up this pace. Says, Ooh, I don't remember Shadow Drakes. That's a cool looking enemy. And I agree. I like Shadow Dragons. They seem nice. and quiet. So you knew this Theos character ages ago, that right? Yes. And that was what? A few hundred years ago? A thousand? What's that even like, remembering something from so long ago? Uh, lifetimes ago. I still don't understand what mm -hmm. it means for me now. That may be a mercy. <sighs> That's what's got me thinking about Theos. Those Domgon said he remembers everything. I mean, can you imagine? Recalling centuries in perfect detail. Every lost love. Every failed dream. That doesn't sound great torture and from the gods he purportedly serves no less you ever wonder how that's changed him whether theos would have chosen this path all those lifetimes ago if he'd known where it would lead person might commit horrible acts in the defense of noble ideals there's usually a shady path that leads from one to the other but i see your point though i'm surprised you have any sympathy for him He's made this life, and who knows how many others, difficult for you. Hating him changes nothing. You're right about that. I'm not defending Theos, but I remember what it was like to carry a burden you can't put down. She looks at her hand. There's a pale blue scar where the broken bottle cut her. Which makes me wonder why he's doing it. Other gods told you that he means to strengthen Wudaka, but to what end? All that matters I is we stop right. him. I like my Neha. This is kind of interesting that I just can't go and pass that. Should be getting to the final area. I think I'm gonna do a sleep once we get to the final area if this is it. Yeah, I believe so. Lots of potions. Ready to take the oath to spread the word of the gods to the lost and heathen. I am trusting you to remain loyal to the gods in this. If 
you do not, you will have greater powers than me to answer to. But you will answer to me as well. I wouldn't ask this were there any other choice. Okay, um, time to sleep and we're gonna do the final battle. Uh, I'm gonna try not to think about how I kinda have to pee. Don't come to battle on the full bladder. We'll see about that. I think this actually will be pretty quick, especially if I have fast mode on for most of it. Maybe I'll slow it down from fast mode. It'll be fine. This is a missionary, same as I was. Taught the wrong things as I was. Asionis. They have held off many would-be invaders. You are ready to give a confession? I am ready to hear one from you. Oh, that was a good line. Ooh, level up. Um, I'm level 15. Oh, boy. During combat, the monk's movement rate is significantly increased. Through pain, the monk is able to cleanse his or her body, reducing the duration of incoming existing hostile effects by half. That's really good. Monk gains temporary insight through endurance. There's a lot of really good stuff. Damage at long range. Long pain fists. Mmm. Summon. Yeah, I think that one might be. Yeah, it's a three wound would be good. Requires eight wounds. Sagani, level 15 ranger. Nice. Stunning shots. Yeah, I think that sounds really good. Binding Roots. Dichotomous Soul is the ability that NPC monks always fucked me up with. Hmm. That's good to know.
Oh, this is the end, right? This is where the last battle place takes place. I might actually go to the restroom. I've come to a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with Adra and trimmed with copper. At the far end of a great pillar of Adra peer uh, at the far end, a great pillar of Adra pierces the floor from below like a ragged spike. Its shimmering texture given giving the illusion of boundless depth. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they are all questions. The base of the pillar stands Theos, the look of concern on his face as he notes your approach. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all others, spinning madly in your mind, but you don't dare ask it yet. You need some admission from him first, some hint of the veracity of your suspicions. You are far from your post, Inquisitor. What brings you here? Your mind races, weighing diff different angles of approach, your emotions barely in check. Is Yovara telling the truth? That woman sought only to destroy the foundations of peace and civility that my people sacrificed everything to build. Is the entire Inquisition based on a lie? The Inquisition was based on the need to cut the flesh from a rotting womb. What is this place? We are in a sanctum holy to Woodica. There are others like it in service to the other gods. I come here often to pray for her counsel, and in this space I may be assured that she hears me. Machine, what does it, it do? It has many uses, but its purpose is to bring structure to the chaos that surrounds it. All these statues, who are they of? They are monuments to Woodica's greatest servants among my people. I hope to join them myself one day, but my work is not yet complete. You're shaking now, having lost all patience for tact. No more evasions. You have to know everything you believed, everything you have done for the gods. Did you lie to me when you said I was right to leave my family behind for the gods? Theo says nothing. Are there no gods? Theo's face what remains a mask a of god? impassivity. Hmm? A higher power. A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked. Something men can turn to in their darkest moments when their days seem only like bridges from one tragedy to the next. Our gods are all these things. But Theos is every word. You find yourself losing control of a boiling cauldron of rage and doubt and fear and hopelessness till you can take it no more. Are there no gods? We are in a sacred place within earshot of the gods themselves. This is not the time. You've been through much these past few months. You will return home and you will rest. When you feel you have recovered, you may rejoin us at the trials. The Inquisition is far from over, and I will have need of you. Mm, need not. There are many who continue to spread the lies of the apostate. The Inquisition will not end until we have pronounced judgment on all of them. His eyes linger on you, and there is no mistaking the threat behind it. And your rage shrinks at the image of an iron wheel in your mind, monolithic and caked with the dried blood of thousands. You do not ask your question again. Maybe this will all go real nicely. How did you find it? It was Lady Webb. Another in a string of acts of petty defiance. For all her knowledge, she always preferred spite over reason. It was reason that guided her hand in this? Then she should have obeyed. I ask one thing of all my followers. She is incapable. A waste of rare talent and intellect. Her talent and intellect were too great for her to live as your servant. What of your cohorts, then? They have followed you to their deaths. Is it loyalty that brings them here? Or is it, as my agent suggests, that they have no direction of their own? You have devoted yourself to studying the work of my people. Why? because I would like to hear the song of your people. Because I believe we can learn from the past and use that knowledge to better ourselves. I wanted Rawatai to surpass the Anguithins, build upon what they knew. 
And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Uh, Kana says, I don't need to understand. I've seen what be what's become of your people. That's all the lesson I need. You are living in the time of my people, Amawa. You owe them more than you will ever comprehend, and so it shall ever be. Greater civilizations than yours have attempted to reclaim what we buried. The greater their successes, the worse their fates in the end. I have seen to it. I understand your Duke's Bells gave you a mission. Their orders do not absolve me of my greater responsibility to the safety and well-being of the Republics. Yet you disobeyed. Something you already have a reputation for. They will know, of course. If it had been for a worthy cause, they might have forgiven you. But I don't see them pursuing animancy after seeing what it's done here. They trusted you. And you disappointed. As you always have. And you will again be disowned. The parents scold, but the children are safe. Whether animancy research continues in the Republics or not, they will survive. For now, that's enough. In any case, I wouldn't be so smug about my fate, Deus. I imagine Woodica responds to disappointment much more severely than even my dukes. State your name and purpose, young acolyte. My name belongs to the gods and my hand to their service. No more. You serve none but yourself. Without contact with your order, you can have no higher purpose. Only the base concerns of the flesh. You have cast yourself from our ranks. Uh, Sewell so says, Connor reads very differently after getting a better idea of what Rawatai is in Deadfire. That's exciting. And I should have done it years before. I'd rather live in uncertainty than servitude. And that uncertainty would lead you where it leads everyone. To doubt, to emptiness, to the many cruelties inspired by disbelief. You will have to forgive your Grandmaster for remaining skeptical of his initiate's choices. You are far from home, Dwarf. I knew my hunt would send me a long way from Masuk. It was a challenge I was glad to undertake for my village. A journey, then. It must be of some import to take you so far and to last so long. Anything worth doing comes at great cost. So it was worth it, then, to tell a dying beast of things it neither understood nor had memory of. Hmm. And the lost gift bearer. You have been many things in this life. All because you fear what you really are. Last I checked, the Ingwithans didn't make you a god. You want to tell me you don't have any regrets of your own? There is no greater calling than the spread and protection of our faith. I regret nothing in service of that cause. Then you haven't been looking hard enough. Or perhaps I have merely witnessed the alternative. You are here because you are lost. The gods cannot reach everyone, I'm afraid. May you fare better in your next lives. I gather you have had your soul awakened. Why else would you shadow my footsteps like some stray mongrel? You think I have something to offer you, but our business was concluded long ago. You may as well admit your lie to me before you die. I answered your questions once. That your soul is not fit to accept the answers is of little concern to me. I lied to no one. Not to you, not to anyone. The gods are real. They are everything we need them to be, and the world is better for it. You denied a generation its place in the world. The heart of this country has skipped a beat. Nothing more. I have done far worse. I plunged the peaceful kingdom of Telosus into civil war. I slew the monarch of Desantio, whose people never knew hardship under his rule, and replaced him with a cruel despot who brought them to ruin. Well, that's kind of a dick move. When plague arrived at the great city of Arborensis, I saw to it that the cure did not. They piled their dead outside the city in heaps that rose above their walls. Yeah, nothing could justify these atrocities. That's where you are mistaken. There was a time, 
Back when your soul was still a shapeless mist. When the world believed only in false gods. Thousands of them. Gods that told them to take slaves. Gods that told them to make war upon their neighbors and devour the slain. Gods that told them to burn their children alive and cover themselves in the ashes as a sign of their faith. But all that changed when they learned of the true gods. Our gods. All those misshapen, bestial instincts melted beneath the radiance of our gods' majesty. You could see it in their eyes. That dull emptiness replaced with the glimmer of a kindled spark. See, Wolf says, I saw sea beams glitter off the Tenhauser Gate, which is funny. Isn't, yeah, this can pretty much go in for the same same uh, pitch. Teaching them that there were no gods would have achieved the same purpose? Yeah. replaced it with one far worse. Have you imagined this existence? The one the apostate would have created? We are not all so virtuous as she. Without our gods, the most wicked, the most tyrannical, they would take that power for themselves. But more than that, it would be a hollow existence. All mysteries forever unanswered. All purposes constructed from meaninglessness. No endings to bring closure. Only a wheel turning without mercy, grinding our spirits to dust. You underestimate people. For all my years, I have seen exactly what they are capable of. What the apostate asked was beyond any man. All I have seen, the millennia of experience. I will not be dissuaded from this course. You're blind this to think the yours way. is the only way. You are controlled by your own doubts. We are all controlled by our own doubts. Better that we should be relieved of them. With your soul and thousands of others, I will see this world purged of its suffering. Hear me, Woodica. Your servant calls for aid. Oh, here we go. Think? Or is the game gonna crash? Oh, Roll there we go. Ten! Hell yeah. Um, okay. I'm gonna hit the bathroom, and we're gonna do this. Oh, I thought there was gonna be some final battle music, like you would get in a JRPG. That's just unfortunate. Uh, but yeah. Be right back, and we're gonna finish this game.
All right, I hope that built the tension. Let's uh, finish this video game. That's not great. <laughs> what just happened? Soul jump absorbs 58 damage. Crit for 15 pierce damage. Kana getting hit. And hits with additional effect weakened. Interrupted Kana. This is not great. Seems good. How may I help? Uh, did I kill someone? Kana destroyed. Destroy vessels. Hell yeah. I got the the vessel thing correct. That's awesome. Um Just say the word. Dead on. Who got it? Our oh, duplicate killed Wodica's judge. Fantastic. Okay.
could do with some some help. How may I help? There we go. Okay, here we go. There's the dragon powers. Um. There we go. There we go. Aloth killed Thales? I think that's pretty appropriate. I think I saw that. At your feet rests the body of Thales, hollow, the dense wrinkles shaped by the silent shouldering of an eternal burden, now smoothed across his color-drained face. His soul remains still for the moment, defenseless, its energy expended in defeat. It lies sprawled across his body like a death shroud. All those lifetimes spent to preserve a single vital secret. I can't imagine having that much... Certainty. After journeying for lifetimes, I can't imagine his failure, knowing it was all for nothing. Nice that they have a dog petting moment in the end of the game. They all followed his mistress's orders too well. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse that he will remember this again one day after he makes it through the wheel. He spent his lives more than any of us will ever know. For what? Binding the world to a lie. Could a man like that ever be redeemed? Mmm, can't help but feel sorry for him. To live so long without a fresh start, with no chance to wonder what's around the corner. Let's just explore his soul. The deep breath you plunge into Theos' soul, and where in Brackenbury? Uh, it has been a maze of narrow corridors and dead ends. Now it is expansive and borderless, its walls crumbling into heaps like the ruins of Angwith as you pass through them. You travel for what seems like ages, rushing to a known destination, a memory you glimpsed once before. At last you see it, no more than a pinprick of light at the end of a long tunnel, expanding slowly at first, then quickly as you near. You come out in the room you are standing in now, but it is new and pristine, and filled with people, thousands of them, all turned towards the great Adra pillar and the machine that encases it. Theo stands at the machine, and you are one with him now. You look out at the crowd, at faces of shriveled old men and cherub-cheeked little girls, at mothers bouncing infants to quiet them, and fathers clasping their children's restless hands, and watching you with somber acceptance. A woman with tears in her eyes gives you a small nod. You turn back towards the machine, uh, your breath, your breaths constricted, your breaths constricted by, uh, beneath the weight of unwanted knowledge, preparing yourself to set out alone on a journey without end. You close your eyes and open them again and find the machine still in front of you, beckoning. You take your place in front of it and the, place your hands upon a large mechanical disc at the base of the great crystal column and speak a single word. Giant rings creak to life, building speed, setting arrays of carved draconic mouths aglow, and sending tremors through the platform beneath you. 
The entire room shakes now with the force of the accelerating machine, all sound drowned out by its deep, deafening thrum. Brilliant tendrils of light arc outward from the pillar in all directions, and you look at, over your shoulder to see them engulfing the crowd, burning them brightly like hot iron. One by one, the tendrils disappear, leaving ashen effigies where people once stood, many of them disintegrating into gray heaps under the stress of the tremors. You look above to the atropillar, and the glowing spherical mass has begun to coalesce atop the column where the, uh, the arcs converge. It grows in pulses, translucent and bulbous like some immense chrysalis, suspended in slow rotation as though it were being spun out from the arcs of light. Uh, when the last arc disappears, the spectral mass hangs a moment, no longer rotating. So bright, you must shield your eyes with an outstretched hand, and it seems to you as though it is looking at you. You bow your head in acknowledgement and look back up to see it melt into the pillar like warm candle wax. The pillar flares with a flash of light, bright as the sun itself, then fades to darkness. The machine slows down to an abrupt halt, and when the last echo of its grinding cogs has passed, the chamber is still, and you are alone. From all sides, reality begins to bleed in through the memory, and you find yourself in your own skin once more, looking down on Theos's lifeless body. It's, it's just like frozen solid right now. You sense a listlessness to Theos's soul, an overwhelming fatigue that hinders its immediate escape and makes it vulnerable to manipulation. You feel as though your victory has given you some kind of hold over it, and you're able to do with it as you please. Banish his soul. Yeah. Perhaps this is the best place in the world for Theos. Somewhere he can't cause further harm. Still, you eventually found the Ovara. What is a few thousand years to someone like him? You regard Theos' soul, still unsubdued, and your pronouncement seems to empower your spirit. Your will seems to uh, you. Your will seems to you now a thick chain, and you wind it around Theos, constricting all movement, eliminating any possible last means of resistance. You call to mind the eternal prison, the vast empty cavern in its cells of Vedra, vacated by souls that chose to betray themselves in order to escape an infinite abyss of hopeless self-reflection. You choose a vacant pillar and pour your consciousness into it, creating a perfect, inescapable hollow within the space. For one with enough space for one and now you gather up theos's soul and bear it to the pillar like uh some bodiless jailer conjured by justice itself you can feel its resistance now the abject terror radiating from it but your bindings will not be broken when at last it is sealed away and you begin to recede back to your center you could almost swear you heard you hear a distant wordless cry for mercy in the stillness that follows, a single word echoes through your mind. A word that you spoke when you were one with Theos in an ancient memory. You realize it is the word that activates the machine. Hi, C hi, Fiona. You're just in time for the end. Yeah, we just literally finished the game. This is the ending. And the stillness that follows... Uh, Say the word. Yay! Yay. End of the game. No loot? And this is a hate that the bot isn't working in Slack. Me too. But I posted. Uh, with your companions bearing witness, you step up to the place where Theos once stood before his people long ago. The great machine lies in front of you, idle, ready. You have seen this machine and others like it in operation. You understand how it... Uh, works. It's, it is a device for directing souls. As a watcher, it would be a simple matter to influence that direction. Though as big as the machine is, it may be the last thing you ever do. Speak the command to activate the machine. There's a shrieking of stone grinding against stone as old cogs loosen and begin to turn. You have only moments before the souls will be sent into the Audra vein. This will be your chan only chance at redirecting them. Send them back into the reincarnation cycle, return them to the bodies they were intended for, and tropically disintegrate them, ending their existence, distribute the essence to existing souls and deer would to strengthen them, 
or dispose the souls to an unknown location. Um, I think just an eh, unknown location. You close your eyes and expand your perception outward. Seems like a choice. Yeah, uh, that's what I figured, Sea Wolf. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you close your eyes and expand your perception outward, taking in the immense totality of the tens of thousands of souls orbiting the chamber. Your grasp on the souls is tenuous. You find yourself fighting to keep them all within your influence, and you can feel them slipping away from you as the machine gains speed. A brief moment comes when it feels as though uh, you hold all of them at once, and their force is so great it feels as though they will tear you apart. In that moment, you dedicate your entire being to bending their orbit, channeling their flow in a new direction. Ooh. At your command, the ancient device became your instrument, spinning to life with deafening resonance and gathering up the swirling essence like thread on a great spindle. There, in the pale, pulsing glow of the machine that set you on this path long ago, you summoned all your strength, focusing on your objective and blocking out all else. With a single concussive blast that rocked the chamber and sent you tumbling to the ground, you freed the souls from their stasis. Exhausted, your consciousness slipping away, your last sight was of the machine, dark and dormant. I spun the pillar and of your eternity. Eyes closed, That's right. And sleep welcomed you at long last. That's very funny. After coming to and searching for some time, Spin you discovered the that Theos well. to enter Sun in Shadow, and embarked on a long and arduous ascent back to the surface. You emerged in Ter Evron after days of tunneling through the rubble Theos had left behind, and when you stepped into the daylight, you were faced with a different Deerwood than the one you had left. At your direction, the souls of the Hollowborn, long lost to the people of Deerwood, were sent to a place or places unknown for reasons as mysterious as the god who suggested it. No sooner had the mystery of their whereabouts been solved than it was renewed, a new riddle for someone yet to be revealed, or perhaps for no one at all. For the people of Deerwood, the question would linger as it always had, for even the truth was beyond belief. One day, the hollow births had stopped with as little explanation as they had started. For all their joy at the legacy's end, dear Woodens would have to content themselves with their own theories as to the how and why of it all. But perhaps this was as well intended. Helia, who had expected the souls to be returned to the Hollowborn, was infuriated by your duplicity. The goddess of motherhood demanded new births in compensation, and made a bargain with Bereth to trade death for new life. The skies of Deerwood darkened, Blotted with swarms of birds and other winged creatures, called together to claim what the Sky Mother believed to be hers by right. For months, the people of Deerwood were forced to stay under shelter for fear of the vicious, unexplained attacks from the sky. The incident left entire villages decimated and littered the streets of Defiance Bay with corpses covered in a thousand puncture wounds. The loss of the souls you had promised to Entropy would be no setback to Remergant, nor to Andra, for the Beast of Winter trudges ever forward, and the will of the Lady of Lament is as unstoppable as the tide. In Deerwood, the weather quickly chilled. Unseasonable frosts destroyed the year's harvests before giving way to the coldest winter in memory. Many who survived the famine would soon freeze to death in their own homes. The oceans proved no safer. A barrage of squalls pounded the harbors along the dear wooden coast for months, sending many ships ending? to be forever lost in the depths of Andra's domain, either mourned or Did I pick the bad ending? to the lady's liking. It is said that Galloway is the enforcer of the guards and is known to hunt down those who wrong them. To wrong Galloway then is truly to wake the beast. And the father of monsters took great umbrage at your broken promise to him. Along with Magrin and Abidan, Galloway embarked upon a more direct approach to claiming his quarry. In the months that followed, the frontier settlements of Deerwood were inexplicably. I sort of did it on purpose. And monsters, 
suddenly organized. I didn't know it would be this bad. Each kit on their own land. Many such villages were all but destroyed by the time troops could be dispatched from local garrisons. Those that weren't destroyed by the beasts of Galloway often Jesus. found themselves at the mercy of the fires of Magran. A dry spell throughout Deer wow. led to a rash of forest fires on a scale not I seen caused since climate the change. War of black trees, and many settlements paid the price for their proximity to the wilderness. <laughs> In the city, Sea Wolf now, says, You ended the Hollowborn and started the, the apocalypse. Other moving which vessels is seemingly soon found true. that their creations had risen up against them. Such constructs terrorize their surroundings, killing indiscriminately and often in great numbers before being subdued. Followers of Bereth have a saying that life is a debt all must pay in death, and their god is known to always collect what is owed. In breaking your word to Bereth, a debt was created. Souls were owed to the cycle, and the agents of the God of Inevitability would not be refused. An epidemic of unexplained deaths struck Deerwood in the days that followed the legacy. Most often, the dead would be travelers on the road, known to be a favorite target of Bereth's pallid knight, who exacts impossible tolls from those who have journeyed for too long. The elderly, too, seem to pass on in alarming numbers. But just as often, the deaths appeared to strike randomly, and for Oops. no reason at all. Those who sensed the involvement of the twinned god dubbed the calamity Bareth's Price, supposing it a payment for the end of Widewind's legacy. Lord wow. Radric's zeal had brought him back to life once, but it would not do so again. Radric's destruction at your hands spelled the end of his suffocating rule over Gilded Vale and the surrounding area. In his absence, the village prospered, becoming a popular destination for new settlers anxious to leave Defiance Bay after the riots. Without a nearby ruler, it also grew more wild, with many settlers moving on as soon as they'd arrived, turned off by lawlessness that was excessive even by Deerwarden standards. Nevertheless, despite the challenges of living there, Gilded Vale had survived, and would continue to survive for the foreseeable future. Following the assassinations of Duke Avar Wolfgrim and Lady Webb, Defiance Bay was thrown into political upheaval. In the ensuing weeks, the streets had become the domain of looters and blackguards. Few dared to step outside their own doors alone or unarmed. But once the dozens had regrouped in the wake of the riots, they quickly put an end to the criminal activity, patrolling the streets in droves and administering their brand of law on any perceived offenders. They also took the opportunity to depose the weakened Knights of the Crucible from their position of authority, branding them traitors to the people for their actions during the riots. Whatever Knights weren't stoned to death in front of their keep were forced into exile. The external contingent of Knights stationed at Fleetbreaker Castle would remain there, their high justice plotting the city's recapture. Wow. The dozens would soon find themselves overwhelmed by the problems of a leaderless metropolis, and in the days and months ahead, wow. Defiance Bay remained Fiona on the brink said, of Fiona uh, said, "Betrays all the gods." I didn't Though know it would be this bad. Had been disabled, Which, fair enough, but use. you know, the gods aren't real, Heritage right? Hill was rebuilt, and also, and she no said, "Who is even alive in this world?" Not many people. District, then members of the Leaden Key, acting under standing orders from their Grand Master, climbed the tower and reactivated the machine. The initiate slew a handful of the new settlers under cover of night and watched as history repeated itself, the victims reanimating and devouring the survivors. After this second incident, the district would remain abandoned. The Duke's assassination at the apparent hands of an Animancer had caused catastrophic rioting in the streets of Defiance Bay, and few Animancers survived the first day. Many Deerwardens took the end of Widewind's legacy as a sign, both that the gods did not approve of Animancy and that the purging of Animancers in Defiance Bay had been enough to satisfy them. In time, their rage would subside, and a number of surviving Animancers remained in and around Defiance Bay, often taking to the wilds to practice their science without repercussions. The town of Deerford had seen the last of the Cult of Scan. Dark rumors about the town's many curses quickly faded, and travelers soon returned. Okay. 
Abidun's renewal brought new vigor and purpose to a god long known for quiet, steady labor. Handicraft saw a revival in the Deerwood, and no smith wanted for an apprentice. Additionally, Abidun's restored interest in preservation led to redoubled efforts to survey Inglithan ruins. Anamancers and craftsmen alike found much to study, but tensions with Er Glanfoth rose. As for Stalwart, the Battle of Caron's Scar only strengthened their resolve to unlock the mysteries of Durgan Steel and build new marvels with the White Forge. However, Stalwart's ambitions brought them into further conflict with the Raid Serens, as more and more impoverished communities gathered at the border and vowed to finish the work of the Iron Flail. It would be many <clears throat> generations before the region saw Maybe that's because I didn't finish there. The Flames that Whisper Clan found a cautious peace with Stalwart, particularly once the villagers heard of the aid the ogres had offered against the Eyeless. The clan moved back into the russet wood, and as Stalwart grew in prestige, the villagers formed a tighter alliance with their ogre neighbors. Within a generation, ogre traders visited Stalwart, and village hunters were welcome in the russet wood. Free from the burden of her memory, Maneha soon left the gift bearers and resumed adventuring. Now that she had a taste for the world, she wanted to experience it anew. That's a lot of blood. Maneha rediscovered her zest for battle, extravagance, and romance. She kept her gaze on the horizon, looking from one journey to yeah, another. Yeah, the White March is fine, only Deerwood's fucked her arms since wolf. To another more fervent. Hers was a life of excitement, violence, and passion. Wow. She moved too quickly for regret to catch up with her, and she hoped only that she might outpace it in the next life as well. The fortress of Cad Nua emerged as a bastion of security in the midst of an untamed land, becoming the envy of every thane and earl in Deerwood. Legend grew over time of its impregnability, and stories of formidable invaders easily scattered by the Keep's defenses became popular around the hearths of Deerwoodenians. Likewise, it also became a beacon to travelers, merchants, and visiting dignitaries alike. Reputed as the finest fortress in all Deerwood, people would journey from near and distant lands alike to experience its fabled hospitality and grandeur. The Audra cool. Dragon, known as the Master Below, her soul now housed in the body of the Huntress Fallen Roet, passed out of Deerwood in relative anonymity, her final destination unknown, even to herself. She was last seen in the port town of Rhodes End, boarding a ship, an Audra talisman glowing about her neck. Palagina had followed her orders from the Duke's Bells, helping establish an exclusive trade arrangement between the Valian Republics and the tribes of Er Glanfath. With the Deerwood's people still weakened by Widewind's legacy, the Valian Republics easily pushed their would-be competitors out of the market. The Deerwood suffered as terribly from the lost trade as the Republics benefited from it. Palagina was honored for her service by being assigned as the personal guard of the Duchess of Spirento. Despite her success, she regretted the choices she had made along the way. Oops. Adair chose not to return home. Still conflicted as to his role in the Saints' War and unsure of his place in the Deerwood, he took a ship to Adir and reunited with his parents. There, he resumed the quiet lifestyle he had grown accustomed to in his years as a farmhand in Gilded Vale. When the dust settled in the sudden lady. shadow, Aloth looked upon the remains of Theos Ixarkonon his former master. He saw where the Grand Master had gone wrong and what would be required to undo the harm Theos had wrought. With a flick of his wrist, he burned Theos's robe, headdress, and every other symbol of the man's power. Never again, he vowed, should Kith live in fear and blind obedience to an authority they did not understand. Armed with the knowledge and courage he had gained on his journeys with the Watcher, he set out on the long and lonely task of dismantling the Leaden Key. With the Watcher's goals accomplished and his own vows fulfilled, Kanorua sailed back to Dekoa. His friends and family found him much changed, for a pall had fallen upon the man, smothering his former enthusiasm. Called before the Lore College, Kana told them of the pain the Anguithan legacy brought to the lands abroad. 
He insisted that a search for answers abroad could only fragment the Rawatai people, as it had done to the Deerwart. His findings were met with much respect, and Kanarua's voice came to be considered an influential one in the growing move towards Rawatai's isolation. Hmm. With Thales defeated and the souls released from sun and shadow, healthy children were born once again in the Deerwart. The grieving mother sought a place where she might do penance for the birthing bell. She returned to Deerford, where, to the astonishment of the villagers, she delivered the first healthy child in over a decade. She remained there, and with each new birth, she saw a measure of hope restored to the Deerwood, and a measure of grace for her own troubled past. Great! Durance continued to blame Woodica for the atrocities of the Saints' War. Believing Magrin to have been a pawn in the machinations of the Queen that was, and feeling that Theos's expulsion had been a step towards reconciliation with his goddess, Durance tried for a time to reopen communication with her. When only silence came, he took it as a condemnation of his continued existence. Ultimately, he built a pyre and threw himself upon it, using his own shattered staff as kindling. Sagani experienced the four months of her journey back to Masuk in vivid colors. That didn't go so well. She strove to memorize every moment of her final trip through the Deerwood, Air Glonfoth, the Valian Republics, and beyond, preparing to tell her village of what she had seen on her long journey. All of Masuk shared in her triumph, and she felt her pride and elation magnified by the joy of her village. Never again did she doubt the value of her sacrifices. After decades as a long hunter, Sagani finally became one of Masuk's most respected elders. She guided her community with wise counsel, and a generation after she finally passed, another huntress journeyed into the world to find her soul. For you, the death of Theos brought an end to your waking visions, and a silence to the whispers of the past. In their absence, you were able to sleep. The questions of a distant lifetime ceased to trouble your soul. All that remained was what to make of the answer. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, there was little to be done, and the matter would have to wait. A long journey loomed ahead. Okay, so... Uh, just gonna read through some of the chat. See what said when I played this, I never found the quest about Rager coming back so among and generally a good ending. I just got a random slide about Raedric uh, coming back as a death knight and slaughtering all of Gilded Vale. Well, that's not great. Um, also, it's the, uh, well, at least it's just the Deerwood that's fucked, the White March is fine, and what an impressive keep. Shame if something were to happen to it. Like the giant statue in the basement becoming alive and going stomping around. Fiona said, Ah, my bird lady, with Palagina being disappointed with her choices, and also woof at Durance. But Sewell said, It's okay because Durance is an ass. And then finally, Fiona said, Clap, clap, clap. We beat the game. I wonder if I'm in the credits. Because it's going to have, like, Kickstarter, right? One day we'll play these games after Baldur's Gate 3. And all of the other ones. Oh, I don't know what level it would be. I probably not. I didn't invest a lot in the beginning. Let's go look. Two kickstarted too? Uh, was it on Fig? I think it was on fig. Which is different. Thomas's? Am I on here? Taylor Clark, Taylor Fisher? I'm not on here for some reason. Maybe I forgot to like respond to a thing unless I'm on a higher level or maybe it just says LVAC maybe I should look on 
E. And a lot of E's. No, no, that Elysium. Emo 808. Dylan the Boof Lees. I just like this credits thing. It's nice. I certainly didn't pay enough to have a different. Yeah, I just forgot to probably fill out a form or whatever. Uh, yeah. Too many Tay-Tays, but none are the right one, says Fiona, and that's true. Okay. Well, I guess, um, continue, and I'll go somewhere, and then close out the stream. Ah, it's almost 10 o'clock, wow. <sighs> I should be getting back to Dragon Quest Eleven, and then I can... Yeah, I, I beat it before I finished Deadfire. That's that's all that matters, is I didn't embarrass myself despite this taking, I don't know, three years? How many? Rock ten. Oh, this is not what I want at all. Oh no. Okay, well, I guess I'll deal with this. Um, Good night, everybody. Watch this cool animation. Load game, there we go. Pre end game, there we go. Yeah, I'll do pre end game and then I'll load up. I'll roll out somewhere. So Will says, Congrats. Uh, and Fiona says, See, if I play this, I will want to side with a god, and then you both will judge me, since you're all a bunch of god killers. Uh, see, well, so you sided with the god and did what they wanted. Which is certainly not what I did. I was bad. It's a bad boy. Sided with the nice bird god. That is probably what I think I did originally. Um. probably what I should have done, but I, I like Cosmic Chaos. I, I'm starting to make more erratic choices in my RPGs, because I'm just tired of, uh, like, life is strange. I, I definitely picked the bad one, because I was like, I see what you're doing, and you're trying to force me to make the good choice, so I'm going to make the bad choice instead. Ha! Take that. And then I felt bad, because bad things happened. But, you know, that's, that's what I do when I make too many difficult choices playing games. Let's see, Will says, I hope Barith gives you endless shit in two. Uh, it seems like that will probably happen. Maybe I should kill some dragons sometime instead of leaving them alive to like terrorize people. Well, that's an interesting disappearing UI. Oh, I guess I didn't. Uh, Fiona said, well, I'm glad I managed to catch you finishing the game. Time for bed. Also, congrats on bed frame. Thank you very much. Uh, it's apparently a big step in my life. Uh, I'm actually even replaced my bed with her bed. Hi, Vet. Um, I, I I feel bad about my bed going away because I Maybe love my I bed. Maybe I could but use some rest. I can also do just fine on either. Um. Fina said, happy face, proud of you, good night. Good night. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go now too, so goodbye. Thanks for, uh, you know, coming with me on this incredibly long journey if you watched multiple videos or streams. Uh, thank you so much. 
I'm, I'm, I'm free. I'm free. I can play whatever I want. I can stream whatever I want. Nobody can stop me. <sighs> All right. Goodbye, everybody.